Okay. So, um, in this example, I have f of x. Yes, Ryan, ready? Okay. So you have f of x equals x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x minus 4. And what they're asking us to do is to um, state the possible number of positive real zeros, negative real zeros, and imaginary zeros um, work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Descartes rule of signs. We're just going to look at the positive and the negative zeros. So remember what Descartes rule of signs tells us is the number of positive real zeros is going to be equal to the number of sign changes for your polynomial minus an even number. So what I look at is I notice since this is an x cubed, I know this is positive. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect how many sign changes do we have. Well, we go from a positive value to a negative value. That's one sign change. Then we go from a negative to a positive. That's two. Then we go from a positive again to a negative. That's three. So for the number of possible positive zeros, you have three or minus an even number, which the smallest even number is two. So that means you either have three or one. Because you have to take the number of sign changes and then minus an even number, which in this case, the smallest even number you can subtract from 3 would be 2. So it's either 3 or 1. Yes? Because that's part of the Descartes rule of signs. It's either 3 or it's 1. So what it, well, let me go through all of them and then we'll kind of look at it, okay? Remember, these are possible. Po these are po possible ones. Yes. So, okay. Say we have like four times. We have to just minus two. Then. Yep. So it'd be four, two, or zero. Okay. Okay. So now let's go and look at the negative. So this is for positive. So for the negative, instead of doing f of x, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do f of negative x. So we need to do negative x cubed minus eight negative x squared plus 2 negative x minus 4. All I did was I plugged in negative x in for all of my x's. Now I need to simplify. Any negative number raised to an odd power is still going to be negative. Any negative number raised to an even power will always be positive. So now this is a positive x squared. Positive x squared times negative 8 is a negative 8x squared. Negative x times 2 is now a negative x minus 4. So we look at this. Do we have any negative zeros? No. There's no sign changes now. So there is zero negative um, zeros. Yes? Negative x squared is positive x squared. Positive x squared okay. times negative 8 be done. So your negative zeros equals 0. OK? So now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and take a look at your imaginary. So we look at this and we say, all right, well, how many zeros am I going to have total? What's my degree of my polynomial? Three, right? So therefore, I, don't, I have no negative zeros, right? Three, so the maximum number of zeros I can have for this polynomial is three. So if we notice, we could have all three possible zeros. It could all be all positive, right? Or what if only one of them was positive? What do my other two zeros have to be? They can't be negative, so what's the other solution? Well, you have to have two more, so you could have two more complex roots. So for your complex roots, you could have two or, um, two or zero. Because think about it again. You have to have three, you have three zeros for your polynomial. All three of them could be positive. Right? Or one of them could be positive. Well, if one of them's positive, could the other two be negative? No, because there's no zero, zero, or no negative zeros. So if one is positive, then you could have two complex roots. Okay? 
Ah.